Hey folks, uh, this lesson is multiplying polynomial expressions with a monomial. The next one we're going to be multiplying a binomial times a binomial. And Anyway, so uh, this time we're doing a monomial with um, some polynomials. Don't forget all your lessons can be found right there at that groovy website. And this is a integrated math 2 um, uh, lesson. So, so how do we multiply a polynomial by a bi uh, monomial? Okay, so here we go. So monomial means one term. So find each product. So here we go. So what we're going to do is call the commutative property of, a, uh, of multiplication. I'm going to commute this negative 4 next to the 6, and I'm going to commute these two x's together. So x to the third and, and x to the fourth, okay? And then we can go ahead and add those exponents. Remember when we have a a variable to a power times the same variable it has to be the same variable to another power uh, then you can add those exponents right there okay so here we go so a negative six times or four six times negative four is negative twenty four and then we'll add those two exponents right there the cookies are right there you want a cookie okay say hi hi <laughs> uh, let's see and then so go ahead and uh, add those exponents and there's your answer right there okay all right, same thing, you guys. Put the, the 5 and 7 together, and the x's together, and the y's together, okay? And so here's 35, and this is going to be x to the 1 plus 1 power, y to the 2 plus 1 power, okay? This is easy, right? Okay, so then when you add those, there you go. You get 35x squared because we add these two guys, and y cubed because we add those two guys, all right? So here, this gets a little bit more, but we're same thing. We're going to put the, the 18 and 3 together. We'll put, uh, the, and they're kind of being tricky here. They put Y first. Typically, they put X first, but this book's kind of goofy, I found out. So anyway, so we'll group the X's together. We'll group the Y's together and the Z's together. So there that is right there. Okay, 18 times 3 is 54. We're going to add those exponents, add those exponents, and there's a secret little 1 right there. So we're going to add the 1 plus 4 right there. Okay, there's that. And then uh, when we add those, as long as we added them correctly, we should get that as our answer. Easy, huh? All right, let's try this one here. Okay, this one we're going to do the distributive property. We're going to distribute this 3x through the parentheses. This says 3x times everything in this uh, parentheses right here. So 3x times the 3x squared, there's that. Okay, and then this sign comes next. So it's going to be plus 3x times 6x right there. And then this is going to be a minus this time. So it's going to be minus 3x times 5 right there. Okay. All right. And then we do the same thing. We group the threes together. Did you hear that? Oh, in the back back there, Lexi says. <laughs> All right. So um, uh, threes together. We'll group the x's together. Here we'll group the 3 and the 6 together with the x's. And then the 3 and the 5 together. Okay. It's called the commutative property. When I drive to work, I commute to work. And so what's happening is, is we're commuting this 3 through the multiplication, the commutative property of multiplication. Anyway, so uh, 3 times 3 is 9. There's a secret 1 right there. There's a secret 1 right there, a secret 1 right there. So x to the first power. So we'll just add those exponents right there, and we should get that as our answer right there. Okay, easy. All right, let's try this again. We're going to distribute this 2 through. So 2, I'm sorry, 2xy times this, 2xy times this. 2xy times this. Here we go. 1, 2, 3. Okay. All right. And then with the same thing, we're going to put the numbers together, the x's together, and the y's together. Okay. There's a little imaginary 1 there. When there's no exponent, we assume it's a 1. So 1 there, 1 there, 1 there, 1 there, 1 there, and lots of 1's. Okay. So here we go. Now we're going to add all those exponents, and then uh, we should get that as our answer. Okay. 1 plus 2 is 3, so x to the third and so on okay piece of cake all right let's try uh, another one of these here so uh, we're going to distribute that two through there it is right there and then we're going to combine all the the numbers together the a's together the b's together and so here this one we don't have to do anything with that it just stays a squared b squared so this is going to be 10 a squared b squared here this is going to be 6 uh, a to the 2 plus 1 or 3 and then there's a B this is going to be uh, 12 a to the third because there's a 1 there and then plus 2 a squared okay all right easy all right let's try one application problem so Bob has a square prism he wants the height to be six inches longer than the length and the width 
So if he needs the volume to be as close as possible to 3,500 inches cubed, volume is always inches cubed, you guys. So if you ever see volume, or it's in units cubed, so centimeters cubed, feet cubed, this is inches right here. So 3,500 inches cubed, what should the length be? And we're going to round to the nearest inch. Okay, so here's a, a square pyramid, or prism, sorry. It has a square on the bottom and a square on the top right here, and then these are called the lateral faces. So when we start doing our geometry units, we'll be dealing with this a lot right here. Okay, since it's a square, you guys, let's let the, the, the length and the width be X right there because it's a square. They're the same right here. And then it says right here, it says uh, the height is 6 inches longer. That means X plus 6, okay? So volume of a prism, you guys, is uh, length times width times height, so it's going to be X times X x times x plus 6, okay? So there's that, okay? So x times x is x squared, and then let's, um, oops, let's distribute the x squared through, so we get x to the third plus 6x squared equals the 3,500. All right, so now we're going to use the possible dimensions. The book is giving us these right here, so don't, they just didn't pop out of nowhere. The book is giving us a hint right here, and we're going to plug the, these into this right here to see which one gets us close to that 3,500 right there okay so these are in inches right here so let's do the 11 okay so we're going to do 11 here 11 cubed plus 6 times 11 squared okay and then order of operations says we have to do the exponents first so this is going to be 121 11 times 11 and then 121 times one more 11 I did that last night, so 1,331. Now we got to multiply those 6 times uh, 121, and then we can add those together. So we get 2,057. Well, that's sort of close to 3,500, but not close enough. Let's try 12, okay? So 12 is, um, uh, we plugged in here, 12 cubed plus 6 times 12 squared. 12 squared is 12 times 12, or 144. And then 12 cubed is... Um, 1,728, multiply 6 times 144, add them together. Okay, getting closer, let's try 13, okay, 13 cubed, so, uh, do the exponents, uh, 6 times 169, add those together, getting closer, let's see what 14 does, okay, so 14, so multiply the exponents out, and then multiply 6 times 196, add those together, okay, now we want to know which one's closest to 3,500, okay? So which one's closer to 3,500 right here? It looks like this one's going to be, okay? So let's answer the question. So it says blank is closer to, well, remember, we're looking for 3,500 right there. So it's going to be 3,500. Which one's closer? This one here, this 3,211 is closer to 3,500, okay? So we're going to use this dimension right here. So uh, the, um, uh, the length of the prism to the nearest uh, inch should be about 13 inches right there, okay? It's like 13 point something, but they said to the nearest inch, okay? All right, you guys, there's your assignment. If you are in our class, take care.